Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Nicole and this is Divinely Design Studio. Today is Wednesday. That means that we have a sewing tutorial for you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this heart shaped block and also turn it into a table runner. So let's get started. to need for the video today is some uh, fabric for your um, binding you're going to need some border fabric you're going to need some background fabric and you're also going to need some fabric for your hearts the center of your hearts you're also going to need general sewing supplies so what you can see here some quilting rulers some pins preferably four pins if you've got them any sort of marking tool that you've got and uh, best press to press all your fabrics before you cut them and obviously thread snips for your sewing machine and a rotary cutter to cut. Okay, so once you've got all your supplies together, the things that you need to cut for each heart. Now this, I'm giving you the measurements for one heart. You can turn this into a table runner like I have, or you can make a, a large quilt with it. It'd be great for a baby's quilt as well. So as you can see here, I've done some um, sewing off camera just to make it a little bit quicker so I don't keep you all day. So I've got four hearts here that are already done and I'm going to show you how to make the heart and you repeat exactly the same thing all the way through. Okay, so what measurements do you need? I grab a pen and a pencil and write this down. You will need two pieces of fabric, which is the center of our heart. As you can see here, I've got a red one here. This is the pieces that I'm talking about. We're going to need two pieces that measure four and a half inches wide. And in the height, we want them to be eight and a half inches. Okay, so you need two of those. And just be mindful if you've got directional um, fabric, okay, like I have here, I've got hearts, little hearts, and just make sure that you've got them the right way when you're cutting, okay? And for the for the table runner that I made, I just cut uh, with the, uh, the width of the fabric off the bolt. I just cut one strip, and that gave me more than enough to um, cut out three hearts. Okay, you'll have some left over. You might be even be able to make um, two table runners from one width of the fabric. Okay, because we've also got a second color here, which is the gray fabric. Okay, so all I've done off the bolt of the fabric is cut a strip off the width of the fabric, so selvage to selvage. Okay, that we, I cut it at about um, nine and th uh, eight and three quarters, sorry, and then I just trimmed it down to make sure that you know I was getting it relatively straight because I've got grid lines on mine. Okay, so make sure that you cut it um, the width of the fabric. All right. Um, so once you've got those cut, then you're going to take some background fabric, and I've got this cute little Riley Blake fabric. It was back. Um, I got this back in. 2016 I think I got this um, it is from 2015 the selvage said but it didn't have the name of the print I think it was called love letters from memory and again I had a meter of this so I've just cut selvage to selvage and from that I cut uh, a couple of strips of uh, four four and a half inches and from that then I cross cut and got myself two squares at four and a half inches and then the leftover I used and cut two inch strips from that and then I cross cut that to give myself four because each heart needs two of these squares and then it also needs four of these little um, two inch squares okay so once you've got them you want to mark a diagonal line on the back um, of both of those you're also going to need um, some strips now I have so you can see here I didn't have any name on it, it just says Riley Blake so it could have been just a standard line um, so basically all I've done is I have cut three strips for my border fabric and that's two inches wide and then I've just um, I had some of this already cut into binding because I like to use uh, geometrical uh, fabrics that for bindings and whatnot so i already had some of these so i've just grabbed some of the strips out of my uh two and a half inch strip uh barrel that i put all the the strips in and um i think i've got four here you'll need three or four for the this particular size okay now i'm not going to show you how to do the binding today um however i will link up a video in the cards and also underneath this video on how to do a binding from start to finish and um i'm going to just do in ditch quilting which means that i will um pop it down on a piece of wadding with a backing <clears throat> excuse me and then I'm just going to stitch um, basically in a ditch okay so I'm just going to go around the hearts okay um, and each one and I'll do that all right 
and I'll probably just have a little bit of film of that with at the end of the video where you can see that being done. All right, so once you've got all your fabrics cut, prepped and cut, you want to starch them and everything before you cut them as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our two strips and this is a great quilt um, or great block for chain piecing because you can do a lot of production um, line piecing basically you set everything up you have your fabrics going which way you need to have them and then basically you're just going to lie one square this way and then one square that way now you can see here that I have a line going from corner the the t side left hand side to the bottom right corner and then on my other piece I've got it going from the top um it's at the bottom of the the rectangle and I'm going from the right hand side to the bottom left hand side okay so we want it to go opposite to one another so just be very mindful of that and that's where I'm um, placing some pins on, on here to make sure that it doesn't move you want to make sure that all your raw edges are lining up as well this is a very very effective simple block to do okay and then we've got the same up here we've got both of our um, pieces and we need to have two of these small squares on each one of them and they're going to go on each corner okay so when you want to lie it down we want to make sure that our line is going in this direction because we are going to flip that over to this side okay so we want it to go from the left hand side to the top and I will show you what that looks like in just a moment. And then our other one, we want it to go the opposite way, okay? And what that does is that gives us our shape. All right, so let me bring this up a bit closer to the camera. You can see for my left-hand side of the heart, I have it going from the left-hand side down to the bottom corner of the line. And then the tops here, I've got them going this way, okay? And then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite one okay and they are put on exactly the same way and what we're going to what we're going for is this little this piece these pieces here okay make this shape here all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch on all the lines. And this block is a great block for chain piecing because you can do a whole heap of preparation. You're just working with squares and rectangles and basically we get a gorgeous block at the end of it. Makes a perfect baby quilt or even a quilt for a toddler, a one for on the couch. It's a great way to use up some of your scraps because a lot of time you've got um, you know, a bunch of 10 inch squares left over. So you can get two strips of for the heart out of um, a 10 inch square and you can use any sort of fabric for the background. I've just gone for the red fabric because this is a Valentine's um, quilt, uh, wall hanging that I'm doing. Well, it's actually a table runner or I can have it as a wall hanging. And then I'll just bring up my next one. And I do like to have the needle in the down position when I'm chain piecing. It just, I find that my machine flows a little bit better. And if I was doing all of these blocks, I would just basically do all the large triangles first and then I would just turn it around and come back and bring my needle up so I can just slide that under. And then all I'm going to do is stitch down the top ones. And again, I will do exactly the same thing. I will chain piece those through and do all the same side. And then that way I know that it's easy to get everything on the bed of the machine. Okay, I'll pull that out and obviously if you're doing a lot you wouldn't be pulling them out as quick as I am okay and then we just turn it around and we do our last one and we go from corner to corner now I did get a, a lovely gift from Rolanda she um, went shopping and I haven't used it yet and I possibly should do a little demo video of once I've worked out how to use it and that's this diagonal tape she bought, bought it for me and apparently you just lay it on the bed of your um, sewing machine and you have your points lining up on that red line so I'm gonna do a little video a little demo with that um, another day but um, I completely forgot that I had it there and I could have used it very well used it for this particular project so keep an eye out for that video all right so we have now stitched all those down so we can snip these apart and we can now remove our pins get rid of any long threads that we might have hanging around that are going to get in our way and then I like to just give these a bit of a press before I 
um, do any cutting or anything like that. So basically all I do is I just lay it flat and I just give it a, a nice press and then that's going to be nice and flat for me when I um, do all my cutting. All right, and another good thing about uh, this particular block is we get some bonus, we get some bonus um, blocks out of this as well. So grab your rotary cutter and your ruler, and all we're going to do is we're going to lay our ruler on the stitch line and have the quarter inch mark on the stitch line. Okay, and then we're going to cut away from the coloured fabric, and we end up with these little scrubby little bits. Um, so basically, what I do is I keep them and then just chain piece them. And if you've been watching my um, crafting with DDs, you would have seen the bunting that I showed last week um, that I pretty much made. It, well, it looks like bunting, but they're all going to be little half square triangles, and I will use them in different projects. So um, as I said, get rid of any long threads that might be in the way. So now that we've done the top, we're going to do exactly the same thing again down the bottom here. We're gonna lay our quarter inch mark on our ruler on that sewn line and we are cutting away from the colored fabric and we're taking that little bit off and that's got my quarter inch seam and then I'm just gonna pop a pin in this because this is going to make a awesome half square triangle. And you can see all the things that all the ones that I've got from the previous blocks that I've done. So I'm going to get a few half square triangles out of that, which is going to be absolutely fabulous because I can make <clears throat> a little mug rug out of the same fabric. All right, so that is what our little piece is going to look like. Okay, so let's grab our next piece. And again, we're laying that quarter inch mark on our ruler onto our sewn line and we're cutting away from the colored fabric it is very important that you cut away from the colored fabric okay and then we'll turn that around and do the same thing yeah and then i just pop a pin in anything that's large i'll pop a pin into that and then pop that over into my chain piece later pile <laughs> And after I've done crafting, you usually do it on a, a Saturday or whatever, I end up with a whole ton of them and they work out really well because you can use them for different things. So now you can see there we've got our shape. Now, normally I would press the seams open on a block, but this particular block, I prefer to press my seams um, to the background fabric. Okay, so I do actually press to the background fabric. So first of all, we need to set our seams. So let's bring our iron over. And setting our seams, all that means, for those that don't know what that means, is just pressing it on the, the wrong side as the seams are. And that just gets it to sit nice and flat. I'm just going to move one out of the way, and then I'm going to just roll that over and press it. So I'm not ironing it, I'm just rolling it over and giving a nice press, okay? And I'm pressing it towards the background fabric, okay? So in my case, that's the white fabric. So whatever your background fabric is, that's where you're pressing it to. You do not want to press it towards your heart. I have pressed it towards my heart. While it still looks fine, I just find it doesn't sit as nice. Okay, so giving that a nice press, you can see there that our heart looks really good. And then we'll do exactly the same thing for the other one. And obviously you would repeat this. Now I have made um, five hearts for my table runner. It would wholly and solely depend on how big your um, table runner is. I made a seam boo-boo there. Let me just fix that up. I've got a bit, I'd rather have a bit big than too, too small, right? So let's just take that little bit off. All right. Bring that back and then I'll just roll that over and give that a press. Okay, so now that that is done, you can see here that our little heart is starting to come together quite nicely. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to line up these diagonals. So I'm going to place it on top and I'm going to line up my bottom one first. And I'm not worrying about the edges down here. I am just focusing on my diagonal, okay? I want to get that nice and um, lined up and basically I am lining up this top edge and this side edge just in this diagonal area and making sure that that is lining up correctly and then all I'm going to do is just pop a pin in there and that's just going to hold it in place for me and then I'll come up and focus on this one up here now I will say sometimes with these blocks you're, you can get a little bit of, it looks like excess fabric. I'll show you what to do in that case in just a moment. Okay, we've lined up our diagonal and I'm popping a pin in. 
okay and you notice I'm not using my fork pins in this case and that's fine so you can see here it looks like I've got a little bit of excess fabric if I give that a bit of a tug it sort of goes away but I don't want to stretch it too much so when I go to the sewing machine what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this top fabric which has got the ripple in it I'm going to put that on the feed dogs and the feed dogs will help it feed through okay so let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch this down and just use a quarter inch seam allowance and I start off nice and slow because I am at my diagonal there and keep my needle in the down position and as you're feeding this through you will notice that your um, the fabric that you had a little bit of excess will start to lay nice and flat and feed through really well. So if that's for any sort of patchwork. If you've got an uh, issue with um, excess, like it looks like there's a lot of excess fabric on one of the fabrics, like you've cut it wrong or something like that, just put it on the feed dogs and it'll feed through and get rid of that for you. Okay, let's bring that up <clears throat> and trim that off. Okay, take out your pins and just give it a press. So we're just going to set that seam a little bit, get rid of any long threads. Now this seam here, so you can see there our diagonals have lined up really nicely. We've got a nice little point here, we've got a nice little point here. But you can see here that that is gonna, sort of going to sit a little bit skew if. So on this center seam, I like to press it open. Okay, so I just open up that seam. And at this stage, I just finger press it and then I will do that for all of my blocks and then I'll bring the iron over. So you're going to repeat the same thing for each block. Okay, and then I'm just going to give that a nice press, make sure all the things are laying where they're supposed to lay. And then I'm just going to get my clapper and just get that to sit a little bit flat for me. Okay. Now you're going to repeat exactly the same thing for all your hearts. All right, so now we've got our heart here, we need to square it up. Now this is where a 12 inch um, ruler comes in handy and we're going to square it up to uh, eight and a quarter. Now we don't want to take anything from the bottom here. We can take a little bit off the top, that's fine. But from the bottom here, if we take too much off here, we're going to lose our point. So we sort of don't want to take too much from there. And so I will lay my square ruler and this one is a 12 and a half um, square ruler so I will make sure that my quarter like my eight inch line okay is laying on this here on this point okay and then you can see down here and hopefully you can see that that there's a little tiny piece of fabric coming past the eight and a quarter that's pretty good like I'm, I'm happy with that I can trim a little bit off when I get around to it but the first side I'm focusing on is this side so I can see that it's a little bit, there's a little bit of extra fabric on this side and a little bit of fabric on this top side. And it's just the nature of this block. Sometimes it gets a little bit wonky. So squaring it up to eight and a quarter will just make them all the same size. So I'm just gonna take some off the side and some off the top and then I'll spin it and do the other two sides. Okay. And you can see that I haven't taken off very much at all. It's just a tiny little bit. Okay. So get rid of that into the rubbish. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it. So I've got the, the top of the block down the bottom here and the side that I cut over here. Now that means that I've got a nice straight edge there and I can line up my eight and a quarter mark on those two straight lines. And I can see that I need to take a little bit off here. And then, as I said, there's just that little bit there that I need to take off. And then I've got a nice squared up block. Okay, and that's all I've taken off. All right, so you're going to repeat that for all of your blocks. Okay, get rid of your rubbish. And then once you have done that with all your blocks, we're going to sew them together in a strip. So as you can see, and it doesn't fit on camera, I have a, a red, a gray, a red and a gray. So I need to add my red block down on this gray one. So I just sit it as if it's going to be laid out and I'm going to line up this center seam. Okay, so we've got a center seam on each block. I'm just gonna lay them uh, right sides together and this is where my fork pins come in handy we are going to nest up those seams really nicely 
So each seam is laying on top of one another and then I'm going to grab my fork pins and pop that in. Now I don't want to have this fabric going past or, this, or anything like that. I want it to all line up. So I want my raw edges to line up. Now, okay, so once you have got all of your um, edges lined up and everything, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch that down using a quarter inch seam allowance. And just making sure that everything is lining up. And that our seams are all going the right way. And when we come to our fork pins, I generally don't remove them. I just go a little bit slower and go over them. Um, I've not ever had an issue with that. I just go a little bit slower. All right, so we've got to the end of that and you're going to repeat that in the pattern that you want, okay? So depending on what size quilt you're doing or whether you're just doing a table runner like I am, it will depend how many you sew together. So well, you can see here that I've got five hearts all together. It's a bit hard to show on camera. So in this case, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring my iron back and I'm going to press this seam open as well. And that's just going to make it a lot easier for me to quilt it because there's not such bulk, not um, too much bulk in there. So just again, like with anything, we just open that seam up. I just don't like a lot of bulk. So that's why I tend to um, press my seams open when I've got a lot of points coming into one another. All right. So once you've um, finger pressed that open, then just take, once you finger press that open, just take your iron and um, slowly press that down. And you're gonna repeat that with all of them. At this stage too, I like to get my clapper and just press it on there just to make sure that it stays nice and flat. All right, so that is our last one that we're going to put on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our borders on. And I always like to start on my short edges. So I've got one strip for each side and a little bit extra. So all I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna come a little bit past, okay, because I've got my selvage on there, and I'm just going to pop that on, and I'll pop a couple of pins in. And then down this end, I will just cut it off straight across, but a little bit past my table runner. And I just do that because I like to be able to have a little bit extra for squaring up. And then I'll turn my quilt around, little um, table runner around. Keep calling it a quilt, it's not a quilt, is it? And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And when I go to square these up and press it and everything, um, I can trim this up really nicely and then I, I won't have a problem with it being crooked or anything like that. It's just something that I like to do with my borders. All right, so once you've done that, then you're going to just head to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch those ends down using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I also start off the border as well. So that's another good reason to have it sort of works as a, like a little leader cloth. And you want to make sure that your raw edges are all lining up. Again, I am just going to press this out to the background fabric, but before I do that, I will set my seams. And I've just cut those border fabrics from the width of the fabric. Okay, and I've just rolled that over, and then I'll do exactly the same down the other end. And you can see by having our quarter inch, we haven't lost our point. We've got a beautiful point on there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually square this up. So I will just move my um, ironing pad out of the way. And all I do is just grab a ruler and I'm just gonna line the edge of the ruler up with my um, side fabric. And then I know I can just cut that little piece off. And then I will do exactly the same down this end. And then on the other side as well. Just making sure that everything is lining up nicely. It's a problem when you try and film long stuff, it doesn't all fit on camera. All right, so I've just taken those little bits off. And so you can see I've just got a little bit past the edge of the 
uh, table runner. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to add our strips on it. Now you've got um, two extra strips there, but you've still got some left. So you may need a little bit extra on each um, one. So we'll just join our strips and I'm just going to take off my salvage and then take the leftover strip from the two short ends, sew them together. And I'm just going to do that on the straight. You can do it on the bias if you want to, but I tend not to worry about it and just use a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I will just finger press that seam open. And then I'm good to go. All right, so again, I will just go a little bit past. Okay, and I'll pop a pin in there. And that's about all the pinning I do on the side, okay? Because it's such a long one, I don't want to waste my time putting a lot of pins in. So basically what I do is I pin up the top, I've gone past, and then I'm just going to line up my raw edges and using that little excess as a, um, as a leader cloth, I put my needle in the down position and then I'm just going to lay my table runner nice and flat and I'm just going to let the machine do the work for me. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and then once I get up to that pin I can remove it because I've already started stitching onto the side borders. Okay and then I'm just going to sew all the way down. So we have now sewn our borders on and you can see there that that makes a cute little table runner. Now all I'm going to do is grab a strip of um, scrap batting. So this is a really good one to get uh, scrap bat batting for. Okay, and I'm going to put a backing down. I'm just going to use a plain backing, see what I've got in my scrap, see if I've got something long enough. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to sandwich them together and then I'm just going to stitch in the hearts in each one. and go around probably go in the ditch around and uh, call it a day all right so I'm going to set up for that and when we come back I'll show you what I've done okay so I have cut some backing I've just got that white backing I had some scrap there for that um, and it's a little bit bigger than what I need okay so you've got and then you've got batting the same I had another scrap piece there and these were just strips left over from the end of quilts and this was long enough for my um, my little table runner here so what i'm going to do is i have laid down my backing fabric with the wrong side facing up then i've put my batting down and then i've laid my table runner now i've centered my table runner you can see there that i've got a little bit out of each side okay and i've also got a bit at the each end okay and there is enough there this probably could come up just a little bit so let me just peel that off I'm just going to bring that up a little bit further, making sure everything is laying nice and flat. And I'm just going to bring that up a little bit further and center it. Okay, and then once you've got it in the position that you want it to be in, um, you just lay everything down nice and flat. Um, and this is, I don't think you're going to need any basting spray, but if you like to use basting spray, go ahead, you can use that. I'm actually just going to use some pins today. Um, and I'm going to start from the middle and I'm going to spread it out and get it to lay nice and flat. Um, making sure that any seams that haven't rolled or anything like that. And then I'll do that all the way down the length 
of my table runner and of course you know I can't fit everything on my camera um, in the frame so I am just explaining to you what I'm doing so I've laid everything flat but you can see here I've got a little piece coming like a little bit of fabric uh, sorry batting and backing fabric coming out and then I've got the same on each side okay you can see that there and then I've also got the same down this end now um sometimes with stuff like this um I will actually press it and everything before I start putting pins in um to get it to sit flat if it's giving me a little bit of trouble but this is not giving me any problems at all so I'm going to come to the center of my table runner and I'm going to grab my pins now I like to excuse me I like to use these um curved pins for something this small you can use your straight pins if you want um, basting spray is also another good thing to use as well um, but I'm not in a ventilated area so I don't want to use that today so I'm just going to grab out a heap of pins and I'm going to go through three layers and I'm just going to randomly put them where I need them to go now I am NOT going to put them near any seams because I'm going to be doing in ditch stitching and I don't want to to do that so for me, I'm going to put a pin on all the large um, corners, okay, and probably one in there, and then one on the border for each heart, and that should be enough. It shouldn't move too much because we're just going to stitch in the ditch. It shouldn't give us any grief whatsoever, and you're just going to continue doing that um, all the way down. Okay, now if you're not sure, just add more pins, okay? There's nothing wrong with adding more pins. And if you place them away from where we're going to in ditch, so I'm going to in ditch around the hearts, and then I'm also going to go down the border fabric, I am making sure that I've got nothing near those seams, but I, I won't have to remove any pins as I'm going. I can do all of that at the end. So it sort of eliminates a step. So just be aware of that when you are pinning. Okay, make sure that there are no uh, creases or anything. Um, everything is nice and smooth. You'll be able to feel any sort of crinkle, like wrinkles or anything in the fabric. Okay, so now that I've got that all pinned, you can see that I've just scattered it through and it's holding all three layers in place. There's no wrinkles or anything on the back. I've smoothed as I've go, gone and you want to start in the center and work your way out. And when you come down to your borders down here, you want to make sure that you've got um, some pins just holding these corners down and I forgot to put one in on this side. Okay, and that's just gonna hold everything nice and square for you as well, okay? Okay, so when we quilt, we want to lengthen our stitch length a little bit, and I usually take mine up to probably about a three millimeter. And then um, when you go to stitch, you can stitch right in the ditch, or you can come a little way out, like a little eighth of an inch, and stitch it all the way around. Now, um, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch and go around, and I will work out which way I'm going to go. But I will start in the, always start in the middle of my quilt, and I'll smooth as I go. Now, with the stitching in the ditch, you don't actually need to drop your feed dogs down makes it a little bit easier and um, you don't need a quilting foot for that although I do like to use a um, an open toe foot from time to time um, but for today's video I'm just gonna leave my quarter inch on and uh, go from there all right so as I said I start in the middle of the quilt and I'm just going to pop that under and I'm going to just start on the side here and I'm going to put my needle in the down position and then making sure everything is nice and smooth underneath. Um, I've lengthened my stitch length and then I'm just going to slowly stitch them together.
Okay, so at this point I'll do a little bit of a back stitch. If you've got a lock off stitch, use that. And then I'm just going to trim off my threads from the back and the front. All right, and let's have a look at that. So flip that over. You can see there where I've stitched. I've just gone right around it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my hearts. And because everything is um, pinned down, it's going to make it nice and easy to come back to the center again. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my little corner of my heart. Okay. And I'm going to make sure everything's laying nice and flat and put my needle in the down position. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to stitch in that ditch and down to that point. And then I will rotate my quilt and then I will come back up the heart and I will just go around each heart. Okay. this point I will do a lock off or a back stitch and then I will just pull that out, snip my threads okay and my back one and I'll show you what that looks like on the back and then I'm going to continue to do each heart okay so you can see Hopefully you can see on the back here, I have just stitched around the heart. Now, I have stitched twice here. You can't, you can sort of see it, but you can't really tell, okay? So you just want to stitch on the exact line that you've already stitched on. All right, and you're going to repeat that for all of your hearts. Okay, so now that all your pins are out and you've got rid of all of your threads from the front and the back, we're going to trim up our little uh, table runner here. And essentially all I do is lay it flat on my... Um, on my cutting board I grab my rotary cutter and I grab my ruler and I use a small ruler for it because I feel I have more control um, it doesn't slip or anything like that and so um, all I do is lay my ruler against the border fabric right up against the edge and then I will just take off that excess fabric and I will do that all the way around now um, as I said earlier in the video I wasn't I'm not going to show you how to add a binding on because I already have a video for that I will link that up down below and also link it up in the cards for you as well so you can go and watch that that is a binding from beginning to end and I've also got another one for how to do a scrappy binding so if you wanted to do a scrappy binding there is also a tutorial for that as well on the channel as I said I will link up any necessary videos down below along with all your cutting instructions as well so I'm going to trim all this up and get my binding on and uh, the next time you see this it will be finished and ready to use all right so there we go that is our little heart uh, table runner I have five hearts in mine you can make yours as big as you want you could make it uh, this would make a beautiful baby's quilt too and you can see there that we've got a red binding on that and that just sets it all off but that is our table runner for today Thank you so much for joining me today i really do appreciate you being here and taking the time to watch and uh, leaving me comments and everything down below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also give me a thumbs up but that's it for our quick and easy heart block today i hope that you make a few of these maybe make a quilt or even a table runner as i have and don't forget everything you need to know about this video is down below but that's it for me today have a great day everybody and i will see you in the next video Bye for now.